Hello everyone, this is Amrit Pal Singh. Welcome to my next video on Apache Fling series. In this video, I'll be teaching you the structure of a Fling program. Because like uh, in the upcoming videos, I'll be uh, discussing that how one can write his or her programs in the Fling, right? So this, the, the title of this uh, particular video is Anatomy of Fling Program means what's the structure of a Fling program? Because every Fling program has some set of common things which we need to specify in each program. So I'll be discussing those common things now. In the next video, I'll be teaching you the writing the exactly the first program, right? Okay, so you can see that uh, I have mentioned some steps here, which uh, which will be the uh, which will be integral to the uh, like uh, in writing the Fling programs. Okay, so these are the mandatory steps that we need to follow. You can see I have mentioned here step one, uh, like first we need to obtain an execution environment. So what do you mean by the term like environment here? Environment meaning is like the. Uh, if you want to work with Flink, we need to first set up an environment. The environment can be local, it can be remote. If you're working in the IDE, because we'll be working in the Eclipse IDE, in our case, it will be local environment, right? Or other environment can be if you are submitting your code to the remote cluster. So we are having two options available. So let me discuss that thing in more detail. I've already opened the like a uh, documentation page of the execution environment class. You can see that we need to make use of this class, right? the class execution environment for this we need to like import this package also org.apache.fling.api.java.execution environment okay so th this is this will be required for this you can see that what's the meaning of this execution environment meaning the execution environment is a context in which the program is executed right a local environment will cause the execution in the current jvm if you're working in the local environment it means you will be running in your current jvm right but a, a remote environment will cause the execution on a remote setup like i have told you the like things in a, in layman language that if you're working in the in a local ide or if you're working in the eclipse ide it means your environment will be the local one in which you'll be working in your current jvm Right. Otherwise, like uh, the other option can be the rem remote environment in which like it will be you'll be you'll be submitting your code to the remote cluster. So what this environment will help uh, like will, what will uh, give it give to us. Right. You can see that it has been mentioned in the official website. It, it provides some methods to control the job execution. Right. So we'll be discussing that how we can make use of this environment uh, 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 execution environment class. OK, so that we can control our job execution and how we can interact with the outside world. In the case of Hadoop also, like we used to uh, like talk about context, right, context class through which we, we we were able to interact with the outside world. Similarly, in the case of Flink, we are having this environment available. Right. So we need to, first of all, make use of this class. And then we need to import this package if you want to work with this environment, right? This is the first step. The first step is to get the environment first. After you have a, uh, after you have the uh, uh, get the environment, then we need to load or create a initial data. Like we need to read the data. Like how we can read? Like we are having several set of functions available, like a read text file, read CSV file, and so on, through which we'll be reading the data. Right. So through which we will be reading the data, uh, like, and then we can we can and we can perform some kind of operations on it. So first step is to get the environment, which will give you the methods to control the uh, job execution, and then the second step is to get the data. Getting data means you need to read the data. Right. Uh, we can we can have a we are having multiple uh, operations available. We are having a read uh, CSV file. We have a read text file. Right. As I've already told you that like there are two basic abstractions that we use in the flink. Right. One is data set and one is data stream. Like both are having their own like a uh, way of defining it. We'll be discussing that how we can define data set and how we can define data stream. Right. Uh, I hope like you must be gone through my previous video in which I talked about these two abstractions, data set and data stream. Meaning is meaning of data set is like if a data is at rest, right? If you want to do the batch processing, then go with the data set. Otherwise, if you are working with a streaming environment, then go with the data stream, right? Third step is to specify some transformations. How we can specify the transformation? We can specify the transformation like like the likes of map, flat map, filter. So what, what do you want to achieve with your data? You need to specify your operations in the third step. The fourth step is to specify where to put your results, means where you want to store your results. If you want to store your result on local machine or some other, somewhere else, right? So you can you can like specify your path over there, whether you want to put your, uh, like, uh, put your data in the 
HDFS or local file system like we are you can specify in the fourth step and the fifth step like it's very very important one like here we'll be using execute method because everything will be uh, will everything will be in vain if you don't like uh, write the fifth step because fifth step will trigger the uh, like uh, execution it's just kind of a lazy evaluation like until you don't call the execute method nothing will be like running in the fling right in order to run your program properly you need to execute you need to run the uh, you need to trigger the uh, program execution with the help of execute method right so this is important so these are the five steps which will be integral to every fling program so let me just take you to the fling documentation back over there let me discuss one or two uh, again very important points will be the part of your uh, like any program the first thing we already have discussed about the environment like you already i've already have specified next thing that will be like using here it will be the parameter tool this is another thing which will be the which will be important or which will be the common to every fling program so what's the meaning of parameter tool so the parameter tool is also a class under under this package which is org.apache.fling.api.java.utils right and this class actually provides the simple methods for reading and parsing program arguments what's the meaning of this point because like we'll be uh, will be writing our uh, command to run our program on the command line right the syntax we follow in the fling is similar to the syntax we follow in the hadoop execution like let's suppose like if you if you want to execute your fling job what do you write on the on the on the terminal you write fling space run space jar file location space input space output so this input and output will be readable will be will be assessed using the parameter tool class that's why they have written here this class provides simple methods for reading and parsing program arguments i'll be passing my input and output arguments in the like in the command line like through which the, this this class will help me to read that read and parse those those program uh, program arguments so this is again very very important right and the another thing that which is important in this case is the is the uh, like a uh, 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 get config method Uh, global parameters like uh, in addition to this uh, like parameter tool and execution environment the third thing that we require is the global param job parameters through the get config method because sometime what happen is we work in the like a distributed environment and we want that every node in the cluster should be should be assessing those global parameters so how we can get those parameters with the help of get config method let me just take you to the a sample program which i'll be discussing next uh, in next video in which i can show you that thing this is the one example of global uh, parameter line that you can see that here we have uh, like made use of the execution environment we have created a object of this class right and we are returning the environment with the get execution environment method and you can see here that we are using the parameter tool uh, and the and the, we are using the params here and we are passing this params in the global job parameters through the get config method and it has been called with the help of our object env so so through environment will be just calling the method get config method right and here we are passing the params meaning is like whatever we are going to write in the um, in, in the fling command like sp uh, space fling space run space jar file space input space output right so these parameters should be read and should be parsed right and in in case if you if you are working in the distributed environment every node should be assessing should be the, uh, should be assessing those parameters so that's a, that's the reason we need to put it globally so that every node can assess those parameters for that this is important so these are the three important lines which will be the part of every fling program right so this is the like a uh, kind of a like a uh, introductory video that how we can make use of like a uh, some some set of uh, common methods which we can we need to write in every fling program right so i'm just summarizing it first we need to get the environment and in this in the first step only we need to specify our parameter tools and we need to specify our get config method next step we need to get the data third step we need to perform some transformations fourth step we need to specify where we need to save our data and fifth step is important like i have already told you i can again show you this one this is the thing like we need to call the execute method right uh, like everything will be of everything will go goes into the vein if you don't trigger the execution it will be triggered through the execute method i hope that you must have understood the uh, structure of a fling program and i'll be discussing the entire program functioning in next video so see you next video thanks for watching